Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United are interested in signing Brighton's right back, Tarek Lamptey. Manchester United value Tarek Lamptey at 30 million. Manchester United are 10 million short of Brighton's valuation because Brighton value Lamptey at 40 million. Arsenal are also interested in him. Tariq Lamptey has been at Brighton for two years. <coughs> He's made 31 appearances in the Premier League and he's scored one goal. He's got a contract with Brighton until 2025. Before Brighton, he was at Chelsea. <coughs> Ralph Rangnick is targeting a new right back. Uh, the right backs Manchester United have got is Diego Delo. He's appeared to be our first choice right back under Rangnick, and the other right back we've got is Amon Wan Basaka. Now I want to give you some news on Donny Van der Beek. So Donny Van der Beek has been offered out on loan to Newcastle and Borussia Dortmund. Donny van der Beek has only started one game under Ralph Rangnick. He hasn't been given enough opportunities at Manchester United. You know, he didn't get enough opportunities under Solskjaer and he hasn't been given enough opportunities under Rangnick. There has been reports saying that Van der Beek is not allowed to leave Man United this month. Uh, Van der Beek remains keen on leaving Manchester United in this January transfer window. Early on in the season, Van der Beek held talks with Ralph Rangnick to discuss his future. And not so long ago, Van der Beek had a bust up with his agent. Van der Beek has only managed to score two goals for Manchester United. He's been at Manchester United for almost two years. You know, Manchester United got Van der Beek for £40 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Now, you already know the news on Dennis Zakaria. Bild said yesterday that Manchester United made an offer to the agents of Dennis Zakaria. Uh, Manchester United have held talks with Dennis Zakaria's representatives. Borussia Mönchengladbach are willing to sell Denis Zakaria for just £6 million, which is a bargain. Fabrizio Romano recently provided us with an update. He said that Manchester United remain interested, but he said Man United have not yet made an official bid. Rangnick is a fan of the player. Liverpool have also been interested in Zakaria. Zakaria is 25 and he's a centre defensive midfielder. He's been at Borussia Mönchengladbach for five years. Borussia Mönchengladbach got him from Young Boys back in 2017 for around €10 million. Euros. His contract at Borussia Mönchengladbach expires at the end of this season. 
And this morning, I gave you the news on Usman Dembele. Uh, Sky Sports said that Usman Dembele is set for a summer Premier League move. With no Barcelona agreement. Barcelona are giving up on Usman Dembele signing a new contract. His contract at Barcelona expires at the end of the season. Revert back towards the end of last year, it said Dembele is set to leave Barcelona because he rejected a contract at Barcelona following a furious meeting with club bosses. Um, earlier on this season, there was talks of a possible swap deal involving Usman Dembele and Anthony Martial. But like I say, I don't want Usman Dembele at Manchester United because he's too injury prone. Do you think Manchester United will make a signing this month? Now, Ralph Rangnick, he's been Manchester United's interim manager for over a month now. So far, Ralph Rangnick has lost one game as United manager. Manchester United lost to Wolves the other week, 1-0 at Old Trafford. That was the first time Wolves won at Old Trafford since 1980. Uh, revert back to the other week, uh, there was reports coming out saying that Ralph Rangnick is already losing the dressing room at Manchester United. And he said, you know, 17 Manchester United players are unhappy. But despite that, Rangnick got told that transfer funds are available this month. So reflecting on that, you know, Rangnick will be backed by the Glazers. I'm very sceptical that Manchester United will offer Rangnick the job on a permanent basis. But reflecting on the poor performances under Rangnick, um, I'd say Rangnick is blameless. The players are to blame for the poor performances. The players are the biggest problem at Manchester United at the moment. You know, Rangnick is our interim manager till the end of the season. Then it did actually say that Rangnick would take a consultancy role for a further two years. If we don't get the top four, then I don't think he'll get the consultancy role. There's problems that Rangnick needs to address at Manchester United, and the problems he needs to address is the squad, the formation, and the team selection. Credit to Rangnick though, you know, he has made changes since he's come in uh, because earlier on this season he brought Ewan Sharp in as an assistant coach and analyst. He brought Chris Armas in as an assistant coach and he brought Saz Challens in as a sports psychologist. Before Manchester United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. In the summer, I can assure that Manchester United will appoint a permanent manager. And there's a very good chance that Mauricio Potocino will be our next permanent manager. Uh, according to reports in France, uh, they've said that Man United are in secret contact with Mauricio Potocino, despite Potocino not being Ralph Rangnick's preferred choice to take over at Manchester United. The Manchester Evening News said not so long ago that Mauricio Potocino's move to Manchester United is almost done. He 
He said Potticino wants Man United and Man United want Potticino. And Potticino will leave PSG by June at the latest. PSG have identified their replacement for Potticino. And that's Sidan. Uh, not so long ago it said PSG agreed terms with Sidan. I think Potticino has won a French Cup with PSG. I think he's got under a year left on his contract. Uh, revert back to earlier on this season, it said Manchester United were prepared to pay the £10 million compensation fee for Potticino. And Potticino came out a few times and, you know, said I'm happy at PSG and he wouldn't let the Man United rumours distract him. He's a good manager, he's Potticino, even though he's hardly won anything. Um, he's proven in the Premier League because before he managed Tottenham. Uh, before then he managed Southampton, so they're the clubs he's managed in the Premier League so far and before Southampton he managed Espanyol. Um, Eric Ten Hag, you know, he could be Manchester United's next permanent manager. There's a lot of Manchester United fans that would like to see him come in. You've got to admire the work he's done at Ajax. Um, back in 2019, he got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals. He's won a couple of titles at Ajax, and I like the way he develops young players. He's been Ajax manager for around five years. He's got a contract with Ajax till 2023. Before Ajax, he managed Utrecht. Before then, he managed Bayern Munich's reserves, and before then, he managed Go Ahead Eagles. The other week it said Eric Ten Hag was leading the race to become Man United's next manager. Man United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. You know, Manchester United have sat four permanent managers since Ferguson. You know, we sat David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho and last year we sat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, this year, Manchester United are going to offload quite a few players. Uh, there's a good chance that Martial will leave the club this year. But we may have to wait until the summer to offload Martial. Because recently, Sevilla called their interest in Martial. Romano did mention that Sevilla can't pay Anthony Martial's full salary plus loan fee. Towards the end of last year, Manchester United rejected a loan offer from Sevilla for Martial. Martial's made it clear that he's not interested in making a move to Newcastle. Uh, Rangnick confirmed last year that Martial wants to leave the club. As Martial did hold talks with Rangnick over his future. And last year, Martial's agent confirmed that Martial wants to leave this month. You know, Martial is demanding more game time. He obviously is not getting enough game time Man United because he doesn't really get in our team. He's recently been out with injury. Uh, the best season Martial enjoyed at Man United was his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Manchester United paid an initial fee of £36 million for Martial from Monaco back in 2015. Martial's been at the club for seven years and he's got a contract with Man United until 2024. Edison Cavani, he'll also leave. He'll leave in the summer. He isn't leaving this month because prior to the game against Aston Villa in the Cup, Rangnick revealed that Edison Cavani wants to stay at Manchester United until the end of the season. 
revert back to was it last Thursday, Edison Cavani had a meeting with Rangnick. Uh, Cavani's played our last few games. Um, he had a couple of injuries earlier on this season. Cavani's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Uh, we got him on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. As you all know, Cavani's been linked with Barcelona. Uh, towards the end of last year, he said Cavani agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. Uh, Juventus have been in for him and last year Cavani rejected a move to Boca Juniors. Uh, Mamad Diallo, he's going out on loan, isn't he? Um, he's not available at the moment anyway because he's on international duty. I heard that Anthony Alanga could be going out on loan to a championship club. It probably would be the right decision to loan Alanga out, you know, so obviously he gains more experience. But Alanga looks a good asset for the first team squad at Man United. He has now made quite a few first team appearances. Um, he came on last Monday in the Cup against Aston Villa and he made an impact. You know, he showed good pace, got into good positions and he got the crowd going again. He's been part of the club for a long time, came up our academy in that. Anthony Alanga joined Manchester United's academy at the age of 12. Towards the end of last year, Anthony Alanga signed a contract to Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Juan Mata, I think he's leaving this year. There's a good chance he'll leave this month, Juan Mata. I think Mata will either go back to Spain or he'll go to the MLS. Juan Mata's contract at Man United expires in the summer. Revert back to last year. Man United extended Mata's contract for the further year. Mata doesn't get in the team much now and he's aging up and he's lost that yard of pace. But despite all of that, he's had a good career at Manchester United. You know, Mata's made over 200 appearances in all competitions and he's scored over 50 goals. And Mata's been at Manchester United for eight years, so he's been a long-serving player. You know, we got Matt from Chelsea back in 2014 for £40 million, brought him in under the David Moyes era. Jesse Lingard, I think he's also leaving the club this year. Like I said, Donny van der Beek, you know, looks like he's leaving. Nemanja Matic, I think he's leaving the club this year. Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but despite that, he still seems to get his opportunities. Matic is the only predominant centre defensive midfielder that Man United have got. I've always had my reservations about Matic because he's always been a static midfielder and he's ageing up. But despite that, he's had his good games at United. You know, Manchester United got Matic from Chelsea back in 2017. We paid around £40 million for him. I think Matic is out of contract at Man United in the summer. Uh, Paul Pogba, he'll leave in the summer, I think. He won't leave this month. Uh, Pogba's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Now, the other week, Paul Pogba denied being offered a new Manchester United contract. You know, the Sun came out and said that Man United offered Paul Pogba a new £500,000 a week contract. That would have made Pogba the highest paid player in Premier League history. And uh, prior to the Villa game in the Cup, Rangnick provided us with an injury update on Pogba. He said Pogba's going to be out for at least another four weeks. I have been hearing that PSG are interested in Pogba. You know, Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with him before. Pogba's former club Juventus have been in for him. He did enjoy four good years at Juventus before he re-signed for Man United. Barcelona have been in for him for and so too have Inter Milan. So reflecting on that, he's had a long-running transfer saga. Pogba's made 212 appearances for Man United since he re-signed. He's scored 38 times. You know, this season is Pogba's sixth season at Man United since he re-signed. 
He's won three trophies at the club so far. Manchester United paid £89 million for him, so reflecting on that is our most expensive signing at the moment. Um, we had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Uh, Jones, I think he's leaving the club as well. Uh, Jones doesn't really get in the team. Jones played in the game against Wolves the other week only because Maguire picked up a knock, but Jones was our best player against Wolves the other week. Defensively good, made some good clearances and some good blocks. That was Jones' first appearance in the Premier League since January 2020. Uh, Jones is only the outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era, surprisingly. You know, this season is his 11th season at Man United, so he has been a long-serving player. Uh, Eric Bailly, um, he's leaving Manchester United. Uh, Damasio said not so long ago that Eric Bailly has agreed to join AC Milan. Obviously, AC Milan want Eric Bailly on loan. And the loan will either include an option to buy or an obligation to buy. Um, Eric Bailly is extremely interested in a move to Italy. Uh, Bai doesn't really get in our team, does he? He lost his place in the team a while ago, obviously with the club signing Varane last summer, and Lindelof for some reason has been preferred to Bailly. The last game Bailly played for Man United was the 3-1 win against Burnley, that was the final game of last year for Man United. Bailly came off injured though in that game. He is injury prone, he's Bailly, which is a concern. Well, Bailly's not available at the moment anyway because he's at the African Cup of Nations. Revert back to April, he signed a contract with Man United until 2024. He's been at the club for six years as Bailly. Manchester United got him from Villarreal back in 2016. Man United paid £30 million. Dallow, um, he could be leaving as well this year. And um, Dean Henderson, he may have to wait until the summer to leave because Rangnick's confirmed that Dean Henderson... Can't leave Man United this month. Um, as you all know, Manchester United play Aston Villa on Saturday in the Premier League. It's at Villa Park and it's a half past five kickoff. I've already given you my preview for the game, haven't I? You know, give you my score prediction and that, and recently give you my predicted eleven. You know, Manchester United will face Aston Villa for the second time this week. Because uh, Manchester United beat Aston Villa in the FA Cup third round last Monday 1-0. The only goal of the game came from a Scott McTominay header. You know, it was Scott McTominay's second goal of the season. You know, McTominay got man of the match. Um, it was a lovely cross by Fred to find McTominay. McTominay has done well for Man United in the last few games. Um, he can't play in this game on Saturday because he is suspended. So Matic will play ahead of him. Um, in the game in the Cup last Monday, though, I thought Aston Villa dominated large periods of that game, you know, they passed the ball well, kept the ball well, put Manchester United under pressure, uh, Villa also created some good chances in the game, and like I've already reminded you, you know, Villa had two goals disallowed for offside. Danny Ince had his goal ruled out by Villar, uh, because actually in the build-up, uh, Jacob Ramsey was caught in an offside position and he was blocking Cavani. I think they are, though, were also checking for a possible handball by Danny Inns. And Ollie Watkins, he also had his goal disallowed. So Villa, last Monday, would have been happy with the performance. You know, obviously they just wouldn't have been happy with the result.
The game last Monday in the Cup was Steven Gerrard's first time at Old Trafford as a manager. Obviously, Steven Gerrard is Aston Villa's manager. You know, when Aston Villa appointed Gerrard in, Steven Gerrard signed a three-and-a-half-year deal. I think Steven Gerrard's done a pretty good job at Aston Villa, but I think Villa have been out of form in recent weeks. Before Aston Villa, you know, Steven Gerrard managed Rangers. Um, he won the Scottish Premiership with Rangers. And before Rangers, he managed Liverpool's under-18s. To be honest with you, I think Steven Gerrard will be Liverpool's manager in the future. Obviously, Liverpool have got Klopp at the moment and Klopp's under contract with Liverpool till 2024. But by the time Klopp leaves Liverpool, you know... Steven Gerrard would have gained a lot more managerial experience. Uh, before Steven Gerrard, Aston Villa had Dean Smith. Obviously, they sacked Dean Smith earlier on this season. Dean Smith is obviously now the Norwich City manager. You know, Aston Villa have got some good players in their team. You know, obviously, they've got Ollie Watkins. Very good player. Um, obviously, Ollie Watkins played in the cup game last Monday. Thought he played well. Like I said, he had his goal disallowed. Plus, he had a good chance when he hit the crossbar. That chance came from a poor touch by Victor Lindelof. Ollie Watkins is a former Brentford player. You know, they've got Trezeguet. Uh, Trezeguet is not available at the moment because he's at the African Cup of Nations. You know, they've got Bertrand Traore. He's also not available at the moment because he's at the African Cup of Nations. Uh, they've also got Danny Inns. Um, I think Danny Inns has made an impact at Villa. But he's injury prone. You know, I also thought Danny Ings was good when he was at Southampton and he was also good when he was at Liverpool. Um, Aston Villa have also got Leon Bailey as well. Um, he didn't play in the cup game on Monday because obviously Leon, Leon Bailey has been out with injury. Aston Villa got Leon Bailey from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Villa have got John McGinn. Um, he played in the cup game last Monday. He did well. Um, he had a good chance in the game. Um, again, won't be playing in the game on Saturday because he's suspended. Uh, they've also got Boo Endia. Aston Villa got him from Norwich, I think it was. Uh, Boo Endia, he played in the cup game last Monday and he played well. Um, he had a couple of good chances in the first half. Last week, Aston Villa signed Philip Coutinho on loan from Barcelona until the end of the season. That was good transfer business by Villa. I think Coutinho will do well at Villa, to be honest with you. Uh, Coutinho didn't play in the cup game, did he? Because uh, he has been away, plus he had COVID as well at one point. There's a good chance Coutinho will make his debut this weekend against Man United. Uh, they've also got Jacob Ramsey, uh, Douglas Louise, they've got him. I don't really rate Douglas Louise, to be honest with you. Uh, Villa have also got Morgan Sanson as well. Uh, Aston Villa have just signed Lucas Dinya from Everton. You know, Aston Villa got him for around £25 million. Uh, so there's a good chance uh, Dinya will be making his debut on Saturday. Good signing is Lucas Dinya for Villa. It's a bad blow though for Everton losing Lucas Dinya. Um, Ezri Konsa, Aston Villa have also got him. Um, obviously he played in the game on Monday in the Cup. Uh, they got Tyrone Mins. Uh, Tyrone Mins is a very good centre half. Uh, they've also got 
Matt Target, and Matty Cash. Uh, Matty Cash uh, did well in the cup game on Monday. He had a good chance in the game in the second half, produced a good save from De Gea. Um, Aston Villa have also got Ashley Young as well. Um, he's been out with a toe injury. Ashley Young is in his second spell at Aston Villa, isn't he? You know, Young is a former Manchester United player. We had Ashley Young for around eight and a half years. Um, Marvellous Nakamba, he didn't play in the cup game on Monday because he's been out with injury. He's still out with injury now, is Marvellous Nakamba. And Villa's first choice goalkeeper is Martinez. You know, he made some good saves in the cup game on Monday. By the way, Aston Villa have lost Anwa El Ghazi. Anwa El Ghazi has joined Everton. Let me put into the equation that Aston Villa lost Jack Grealish to Man City. Uh, Villa did get £100 million, though. Not so long ago, Axel Tuanzebe left Aston Villa to join Napoli on loan and revert back to last summer. Tom Heaton left Aston Villa because obviously my club, Man United, got him on a free transfer. Tommy and he's our third-choice goalkeeper. So it will be a good game on Saturday against Villa at Villa Park. Uh, Man United won the fixture at Villa Park last season 3-1. Um, obviously, Villa won the league game at Old Trafford earlier on this season 1-0. That was the first time Aston Villa won at Old Trafford since 2009. So obviously we know Popper isn't going to be playing in this game because he's injured. Martial's recently been injured. Eric Bailly's at the African Cup of Nations. So he's a Mad Diallo. Uh, Luke Shaw won't be playing in this game because he's suspended. And Scott McTomney won't be playing in this game because he's suspended, like I mentioned earlier. Um, obviously you know the news on Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, Ronaldo is expected to be available for this game on Saturday. Ronaldo missed Man United's game against Villa in the Cup on Monday due to a minor muscular problem. Now, as you all know, Cristiano Ronaldo recently gave an interview. And he's backed Ralph Rangnick to do a good job at Manchester United. He also said Ronaldo that finishing below third is unacceptable recently Cristiano Ronaldo has been targeted by PSG the other week Cristiano Ronaldo held talks with his agent George Mendes about his future because the other week was it uh, Ronaldo came out and said that you know he's ready to quit Man United if the club's next manager isn't to his liking and Diego Dallo um, he's expected to be available for the game on Saturday against Villa, which is good news. Um, Dallow played in the cup game last Monday. Obviously, he picked up an injury in the first half. I think it was an ankle injury. So, there you go. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.